I'm a French type designer. If you don't, if you haven't noticed my accent, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to present you um, what. I'm going to do uh, for the next 18 months. Uh, we really at the beginning of my project uh, on Mayan hieroglyphs. So uh, I will start by introducing you uh, to the histor historical and geographical side of the, this writing system, uh, then the characteristic of this, and to finish the issues uh, I'm about to face. Here is the very first Mayan script discovered uh, in uh, 2005 uh, by William Saturno, uh, David Stuart, and Boris Betran in the ruins of San Bartolo in Guatemala. Um, we can estimate the, the date uh, in between uh, 300 to 250, uh, thanks to the carbon 14 analysis. Uh, we can read the word Ajo, uh, which means lord or noble ruler. This is a really first representation of this word, uh, in, I mean, in the Mayan history. But the other glyph is uh, a more abstract looking shape and, and still un unreadable. Even if the, we could say uh, they could be the ancestor of the future Mayan hieroglyphs. So uh, Mayan civilization uh, has spread throughout the Yucatan Peninsula, from the south of actual Mexico to the north of Honduras and Salvador. Uh, it is generally agreed uh, that the so-called Maya are uh, from the lowlands uh, because they were the most developed and prolific tribes. Uh, they really, really are the really the creator of the Mayan writing system. So this script, uh, which lasts for the more than uh, one thousand years, with a golden, uh, golden age in the period called uh, late and early and late classic, uh, was abruptly stopped uh, at the time of the discovery of America by Europeans. The conquistador uh, like kill all those who refuse to to write in Latin alphabet, but they also burn uh, all the Mayan books uh, because of this fact. Uh, in one or two hundred years, uh, nobody, no one of them could uh, read or write hieroglyph anymore. Uh, this is why. The, deco the decoding of this writing system was very late, and we don't have Rosetta Stone like in Egyptian. <laughs> Luckily, um, some of the support of this writing system came to us. Uh, we found carving, carved hieroglyphs uh, in stone, I mean. Uh, so you can just look the these beauties. <laughs> Uh, they are found uh, in Mayan archaeological site and uh, they are very merging uh, with architecture, in particular in temple. You can also find uh, Mayan script of ceramic pottery. Uh, much of them uh, was found in underground tomb, uh, and by chance, uh, the time did not have any impact of the hieroglyph painted and color. Uh, and the biggest and the more interesting sources uh, of Mayan writing is what uh, are called codices, uh, of which only five have survived. Uh, for example, on the left, uh, you can see the Mexico Codex discovered in the 60s. It's the oldest codec, the codex found. Uh, then on the right, uh, this is the Madrid Codex, found in uh, 1965. Uh, here on the left, you have the Codex of Paris, found in uh, 1966 by the French uh, Etienne Brasseur de Bourbourg. And the last one, which is probably the most uh, important and interesting in terms of hieroglyph, is the Dresden Codex. It was discovered in 1739, uh, but I will come back to this later. 
this engrave or paint uh, writing were done by Scribd. Uh, we had a very special statue uh, within the Mayan civilization because they were at the same time scribe, doctor, or astronomer, priest, and many other uh, things. Uh, they were like you know the the scholar of the city and met like the link uh, between gods and men. Uh, legend says writing out a gift from the god uh, Pubatun, um, like you can see on the, this poetry, uh, we, where he was teaching um, ri writing the art of your relief uh, to a scribe. It's probably why this writing system is uh, so complex and beautiful at the same time. Uh, indeed, the Maya system is logographic. I mean, a glyph can represent a word, an idea, a concept. Uh, for example, the word Balam on the left, uh, written Balama, but uh, the rule is that the last vowel on disappears in Mayan or oral form. Uh, this word means Jaguar, but also hidden. Uh, Mayan had a very smart and... and and different way of seeing uh, the world around them uh, because the jaguar hides in the jungle to hunt, so they use the same glyph for it. It's like, you know, a metaphorical and a metaphorical vision to see things and concept, I mean. Uh, and it's the same for the, the word yala. Uh, uh, it means uh, uh, harvest but also a child from mother. So, you know, metaf metaf metaphorically, uh, the mother child could be like her others. Uh, but the, this writing system can also be syllabic. Uh, this means uh, uh, your glyph can be composed of several, several syllabus. Uh, e, for example, the word tikal, write tikala. It means to get drunk on, to get drunk on. And the second one, uh, toxat, but uh, written tokaxi, uh, literally means blood penis with the syllable uh, toxati. And as you can see, you can find the same syllable t on the on both glyph. And but just this one is just rotated, rotated to 19 degrees at the end. And this is the tricker, trickiest part of this writing system. Uh, you can put logo syllabic glyph with the addition of phonetic complement. Uh, in here on the left you have shashaka, but you just pronounce shak. Uh, it it means uh, great or red. Uh, so they double the, the first syllable to help the reader. And on the other glyph it's tune, it's um, stone, uh, and you write you read uh, tunini. So it's a bit tricky, but uh, it's like that. So, as you can imagine, a uh, script loves to play with variation of the same word, even in the same text. So, is is for example, it's a word a uh, vitz, right in vitzi. It uh, it means mountain. Uh, so you have the personified uh, glyph. Uh, but with the I mean, it personifies the mountain spirit. Uh, the other one is the syllabic way to write it, and the other one is uh, with a phonetic complement, so you can you can read vivid z. But it's not the only tr only tricky part on Mayan hieroglyph because the reading direction is also complex. It's done by column of two to left to the right and to the top to the bottom, and it's a bit uh, the same for the construction of a hieroglyph, like you can see. Uh, this con construction are called uh, quadra and can contain up uh, to 10 words or syllabes in, the, in a single hieroglyphs, uh, which, which, as you can guess, uh, made the decoding very complicated. Uh, other difficulties, uh, it's uh, some hieroglyphs change with the time, like on the left, but also geographically between Oriental and Occidental tribes. So it's very important to understand the Maya writing. It uh, was a, a really powerful means of expression, like our in a way. And you may have seen that the border between Mayan art and Mayan hieroglyph is very blurred. 
uh, is a jaded artifact represent the, the main god of corn. And, and on the right, the hieroglyph for this god. So we can establish that many identical, identical shapes can be found between them, uh, like the eight with this kind of hook uh, inside, or uh, the wavy shape uh, which looks like a corn plant. And it's the same for the, uh, his earrings. Uh, another good example uh, is the represent, representation of a fish, uh, which is called Kai, and the syllabic scene Ka come, direct, come directly from it. As you can see, uh, we find the same feature in, with a scale or with the tail of the fish. Now, um, I will focus on the main part of my project as the Anete, uh, which will be to design more two. 115 glyphs uh, based on the audit code proposal of Carlos Payan Gayol, this guy, uh, with a researcher at Bonn University in Germany. Um, most of the glyphs will be based principally on the Dresden Codex, and I will face many problems during my research, I guess. Uh, the first problem is going to be about the resource I will choose to define the graphical style of my glyph. Uh, do I base it on the codex poetry steel made with a brush uh, with you know very relaxed and gestural uh, style, or uh, I base myself on the carved Mayan hieroglyphs which are more square and geometric? Um, the second one is going to be about the weight I'm going to apply to my glyph uh, when the glyph is enough readable and when it's just too thick. Uh, another problem is about the difference of the thickness of the strokes. Uh, this is a very char characteristic feature in, of Mayan hieroglyphs that make uh, bolder the most important part of the glyph and, the, and thinner um, the decorative aspects. So I have to define uh, the difference between them. It's like a bit like a contrast. And the last point will be uh, on the color on my, on my glyph. Um, this glyph, uh, you know, uh, in small text will just look darker than the other. Uh, but I think uh, I can answer to that because I'm used uh, to thinking and as a type designer, you know, of Latin writing, uh, which we tend to homogenize the tap the color of the glyph. Uh, but for example, if you take Chinese character or what you want, some glyphs are just one stroke and other are maybe 10 stroke. So it's like you no know, normal. This is what uh, makes the, the rhythm of the text. And I believe this is, this is the same in Mayan script. This is, this is applicable for, for Maya script. So as you can see, uh, I'm going to, to have a lot of work to do. So goodbye party and <laughs> thank you to listen to me.